Praise the Lord and good morning to another great day here at New Life City Church, our online platform. I'm so glad you could join us this morning as we dissect the arena of prayer to benefit us even as we progress in this new month. Shall we just begin by praying? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that this is another day that you have made, a day we can rejoice in, a day we will be glad in, a day that we declare has come from your presence complete with every goodness, every mercy, everything necessary to live a life of godliness and honesty before you. I thank you this morning for the grace that is already working on the behalf of your people as they wake up and get ready to pray and join us. I thank you for what you're doing in their lives in Jesus' name. This morning, I want to take a few minutes to just um, help us understand in a clearer form um, why and how we use certain scriptures. This week has been a tough week, uh, to say the least, least. It looks as if uh, the month of March has stirred up something. It's a month of Lent where people are generally fasting and praying, anticipating the day of Pentecost as it comes towards the end of the month. But uh, pretty much during this season, as people are preparing themselves, there is events that come up on the lives of an individual that seems as if it's a resurgent of, us at, of an attack. Last week, we thought on no shaking, the idea that do not be disturbed when things happen unexpectedly around about you and the diverse subtle pressures that the enemy uses to destabilize your life. Well, this morning, I want to reinforce that with an understanding, the four key or five key things that you can do to help yourself, especially when you're praying. So we start out in the book of Hebrews in chapter 4 and verse 15. It is imperative for every believer to know that they have a high priest. Verse 4 and verse chapter 4 and verse 15. It says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities or weaknesses, but was at all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. And because of this, let us come therefore boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. In other words, very clearly the scriptures tell us that you are not alone in the struggles and the difficulties and the challenges that you are facing every day of your life. No matter what is happening to you, God sees it and God has a response for you to help you come out of that mess to help you overcome setbacks. And so it says, we have a high priest. When we pray, we need to know that there is somebody who is in the heavenlies that understands how you feel, that has been challenged like you are being challenged right now and overcame. And that high priest works for you. So let's talk to God about the priestly role that is given unto Jesus Christ on our behalf. Our Father, this morning, I thank you that we can come to the throne of grace boldly. We can come with urgency. We can come with confidence, knowing that our high priest, even the Lord Jesus Christ, stands and makes intercessions for us. One who has been tempted like we are, and yet he overcame. Therefore, it is possible to overcome difficulties. It is, it is possible to overcome this sense of loss, the sense of lack of control, the sense of not understanding what is coming against you and why. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you give us confidence that we can turn to you. We can pivot our natural life and turn to you and tap into the realm of the Spirit. We remind ourselves this morning that when you created mankind in your image and after your likeness, you asked him to have dominion over all the works of your hands. You created us here on earth to exercise dominion, that through us you will give us authority and power to dominate the space where we're in. We therefore challenge everything in the realm of the spirit, everything in the realm of the natural that has gathered themselves together to make life difficult, to make it menacing for the individual, to overwhelm them, to challenge their mental space, to make it seems that they are not in control when yet they are. I thank you this morning that we are reminded from this scripture that we have a high priest that works alongside with us, one I can turn to in confidence and one that has given me access to the very throne of grace 
to receive boldness, to receive grace and mercy for my time of need. This morning, Heavenly Father, we ask for you to be merciful. Show your mercy as you have said that goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And so this morning, I thank you for the accompanying mercy and goodness that followed me today, that opened doors for me I did not know I can walk through. Reveal unto me the opportunities that you surround me today, that I can take an advantage over every pressure, every setback, every apparent challenge in the realm of the Spirit, every agitation by the spirits around me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you give us authority to bind up in the realm of the Spirit and to loose on earth that which is necessary for us to live a life of honesty and godliness in the fear of you. I thank you for this revelation this morning as we pray. And I set myself in agreement with individuals that are being challenged in their mind, that are being frustrated, that sense a, 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 an awareness of inadequacy, that feel vulnerable this morning. We plug every hole in the realm of the Spirit over everyone in the sound of my voice. I take authority on their behalf and we stop the agitation. We stop the staring of their spirit. We stop their sense of fear and incompleteness. We stop in the name of Jesus. Every anxiety attack that comes, feeling inadequate, feeling vulnerable. Lord, you said that when we are weak, then are you made strong on our behalf. Your strength comes this morning. And I thank you that my strength comes from the Lord, who is the maker of the heavens and the earth. Thank you, Father, that you cause us to arise from every anguish, from every challenge, from every difficulty. Even this morning, as we set ourselves in array, as we set ourselves in prayer, as we gather our thoughts this morning, some just waking up depending on their time zone and realizing that things are missed, activities that happened last night. But Father, we are not moved this morning by what we are hearing. We are not moved by what we are feeling. We are not moved by even what we are seeing, be it on social media, on the news, in different places. Our confidence is in you this morning that that which you have begun in our lives you will complete in the name of Jesus according to your word. Thank you for the assurance that I get from your scriptures as I remind myself step by step in every process that we are more than conquerors by him that has called us out of darkness and translated us into his marvelous light. I thank you this morning for the many that are tuning in to this prayer, both on the live feed and those that will come back to it on YouTube. And I pray that the blessings that extends from the words that we speak cannot be revoked in the name of Jesus, but will accomplish their intended purpose according to your word. You said we shall speak your word and it will not return void, but must accomplish wherever it has been sent. And so this morning, I send the peace of God. I send the stability of God. I send the calmness of prayer, even unto the lives of our listeners in the name of Jesus. Yes, O oh God, they will indeed arise and their enemies will be scattered. When the flood comes in, O oh God, you push back by the spirit that has already been placed inside of us. This morning, I thank you for the staring of every grace, the staring in our spirit, man, of every good fortune towards us in the name of Jesus. We thank you for these blessings that come from approaching the throne of grace to receive mercies at the time of need. Thank you this morning for what is made available in the realm of the spirit that is being accessed by your people even as they pray. Thank you for the abundant blessings that make life sweet in the name of Jesus. And people said, Amen. In the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 26, we are reminded again that even when you do not know how to pray, Prayer is not left only to yourself. Romans chapter 8, and I read verse 26. It says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities. We see the word infirmities. It refers to our inadequacies. It's not sickness. It, it, it refers to our inabilities to do things by ourselves. And it says, likewise, or in the same manner, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. There is an ought to how to pray. There is a way that we needed to pray. There are specifics that enable us to become effective because when you pray and you use the word of God, you are using a two-edged sword. The Bible says the sword of the spirit 
which is the word of God in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, talking about the armor of God. It says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And that's a, a, a tool of confrontation, a tool that we use uh, to, to in, in conflict in the realm of the spirit. I'll come back to that in a minute. But it says, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit itself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Every time we pray, I remind myself that the Spirit of God also prays alongside with me with groanings that cannot be uttered. For those that pray in tongues, that's when you pray in the Spirit. And by praying in the Spirit, the Spirit is using your spirit to pray on your behalf. He's making intercession. He's interceding for something that you are even unaware of. He's helping to stand in the gap. Who knows what plans the enemy has for you? But the Bible says, for he that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. Verse 27, the one that searches the hearts knows what is the mind of the spirit. And it says, um, because he makes intercession for the saints. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for you and I according to the will of God. The purpose of God will come to pass. It will not be frustrated. It will not be delayed. It will not be interfered with. God himself said, I know the thoughts I have towards you, thoughts of good and not of evil, to give you an expected end. This morning, I want to remind each and every one of us that God expects you and I to get to the destination he has set. He has put everything at our disposal, including angels that work on your behalf. Shall we pray? I thank you, Heavenly Father, for the encouragement that we get from the Scriptures every time we read. Thank you, Father, that your Word speaks to us. It encourages us. It creates a roadmap that we can follow. It builds up our confidence when we are reminded that when we ask anything according to your Word, you hear us. And when you hear us, we know that the things that we have asked of you, the very petitions, the very requests are being made possible unto us in the name of Jesus. I thank you this morning that we have in the Holy Ghost, an intercessor. You said, oh God, when the spirit of truth is come, he will never leave us nor forsake us. And so today I am encouraged that even if I don't know he's present, even if I don't feel he is present, I know from your word, which is the truth, that he is here and has never left my side. Therefore, I thank you. He's making intercessions at the moment according to the will of God for me. He's making intercession even when I feel vulnerable. He's making intercession for me, for my family, for my household, for the activities and the agenda that that you have placed before me. I thank you, Father, that the spirit that searches even the deep things knows what is the mind of God. And I thank you, Lord, that because he knows what is your mind concerning me, he intercedes on my behalf. He stands in the gap regarding my needs. He stands in the gap regarding the concerns that I have. Therefore, before I speak, he has already heard me. And while I am yet speaking, he has already answered. I thank you, Father, that my answer comes the moment I articulate, the moment I voice it out, the moment I speak, God, you hear from the heavenlies and you provide the blessing necessary. You provide the answers from heaven to be a blessing unto us in the name of Jesus. Therefore, with confidence, we know on this Sunday, O God, that blessings abound towards us and all things work together for the good of them that love you. All things will work together for the good. That hospital report that has been received, it turns around for our good. That negative credit report, it turns around for our good. That employment situation, it turns around for our good. That lack that people are fearful of, that concern about their future, and that inadequacy where they don't know what to do, Lord, it turns around for our good this morning because as individual Christians, as pre unto our own families, as head of our own households, we make a declaration and we have already declared that the blessings of God abound to us from the rising of the sun 
to the going down of the same. The Lord shall be glorified in and through our lives. You have made us an example of the believer, confident and strong in all things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that shame and reproach is away from your people. It shall not evil be mentioned amongst them. Thank you, Father, that the blood of Jesus is a covering for us in all things in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you have already encouraged us as we keep reminding ourselves that he that dwells in the secret place of the Most High, he shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. And so it is under the Almighty shadows of Almighty God, the Creator, the one omnipotent, omnipresent one, the one alone that needs no other by his side. He is the one that watches over us. He is the one that has made mountains around us like the mountains that surround Jerusalem. He is our defender. He is our shield and our buckler and has given us a name that is a strong tower that we run into him and we are safe. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you surround us with confidence and grace and stir up hope and excitement, continually asking us to look up onto the hills, look up onto your presence, look up onto your awareness, look up onto your word, look up and see that the glory has come upon us and is rested upon us and it has become a light that shines for others to recognize. Thank you for making us a beacon of hope in our communities. Thank you for, oh oh Lord, declaring us a city that is built on a hill that cannot be hid. And so in spite of what is shaping around us, we are not moved by any of these, but we celebrate the plans and the thoughts that you have for your people. We celebrate the goodness and the mercy that continues to come our way in spite of shortcomings, in spite of things that seem like they are inadequate. Thank you, Father, that you said you have blessed us with all spiritual blessing in heavenly places and have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. And so we thank you for our resource that is available unto us. Thank you for that which is being dispatched even as we pray. Heavenly assistance. You said, oh God, are they not ministering spirits sent forth to minister unto those that shall become heirs of salvation? Thank you this morning, O Lord. We cannot continue to express. We cannot express enough, O God, the thanksgiving that we have, the way we are encouraged, the way we are motivated, the way we are excited, but what increasingly you are doing. You disappoint the enemies that come against us, O God. You cause them to be squashed and flee before us seven ways. Thank you for these blessings in Jesus' name. I want to look at another scripture that helps us. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 12. And I hope you're writing these down because these are the very scriptures that you need to build yourself up. I am showing you how we are using them and converting them into relevant prayer topics. It says in Hebrews chapter 12, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper. Why is that important? Because as you are using the word, it it is able to give you discernment. We are not unaware of the tricks of the enemy. I get up in the morning and I can see what the enemy is doing. I can feel the agitation. I can feel his sense of direction and misinformation and what he wants to do to make you feel irritated and make you respond and react instead of leading and acting in the name of Jesus. And so it says that the word of God is quick and is powerful and it is sharper than any two-edged sword and it pierces even the dividing assault of soul and spirit. Sometimes your soul can be in the right course, but your spirit senses an agitation. You sense that irritation is an agitation. I'm using these words deliberately because that's all the enemy does. He brings agitation onto our mind and makes you feel vulnerable in the name of Jesus. Those are the things that we have to avoid. Those are the things that we have to overcome. And it says the way we do it is by speaking the word of God, the dividing asunder of the spirit of soul and the joint of the marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. You find yourself surrounded with people that are sycophants. 
They smile with you, but they mean you evil. They laugh with you, but they are looking to exploit every weakness. They appear as friends, but they are not. They are plantings, vulnerable individuals that the enemy can use to make life a living hell around you. But you are not unaware of his devices because your exposure to the word of God gives you discernment. It gives you the ability to read through the smile and the fakeness around them and you can arrest them in the realm of the spirit. You pray that by the word of God, grant me discernment this morning to see those who are for you and those who are not for you. Even Jesus Christ asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And some gave him one advice and the other. And at one point or the other, you heard Jesus said to Peter, get thee behind thee, Satan. I know that you mean well, but you are being vulnerable and used by the enemy to bring agitation to my spirit. This morning, I want us to pray. Whatever has caused you is causing you, wants to cause you uh, discomfort, mental discomfort, an individual shaking, a sense of ill will and a sense of unease in your spirit. Those are the early signs that something is being concocted, is being planned. We will avert it this morning in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word is ever present to give us insight, to give us illumination, to give us direction, above all, to give us counsel. This morning, I thank you that the truth about your word is still sure. It is a word that is quick and powerful and ever discerning and sharper than the two-edged sword, and that it pierces even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and the marrow. Wherever the enemy has set up location, wherever he has pulled up today and made it seem he is comfortable around friends, around family members, around loved ones to strike at us in the name of Jesus. Today, I pray and I say, oh God, expose that for which it is. Let us discern and know. Give us deeper understanding of who we are surrounding ourselves with. In the calmness of the moment, speak to us in the language we can understand. Make clear unto us the intent and the thoughts that people have concerning us. Not everyone smiling is our friend. Not everyone loving words. Not everyone trying to be close. The Judases are close to us in the name of Jesus, but today we call them to be exposed. We say, oh God, make life uncomfortable for every fake individual that is surrounding our people being a distraction. May they know with confidence they do not need them around them, but all they need is you and your word. I pray that the word of God will come alive in the lives of our people. The word of God be stirred up in the hearts of men. Even as Paul told Timothy, stir up that gift that is within you. Let it be a staring this morning, a reminder that your word that the Holy Ghost brings to remembrance to us. It helps us and it sets our course right. You made our crooked places straight by allowing your word to remind us of who you are to us. I thank you, Father. The clarity of your word helps guide us in making decisions this morning. It guides us in understanding the events that surround us. It guides us this morning in knowing what we should do, O Lord, that we are not perplexed. It was you that gave us a discernment that this gift is like in a broken vessel, that the excellency of the power may be of you and not of us. I thank you this morning that that is the reality of our existence this morning. It is what I pray for everyone that joins us this morning, everyone that is connected with us today. Let them experience that wholeness that comes from being led by your spirit. You've already said, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they indeed are the sons of God. And thank you, Father, that you lead us in victory, you lead us in confidence, you lead us in understanding for your name's sake. I pray in the name of Jesus. In the book of Felicia, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, For that reason, do not be concerned. Or verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing. Don't be too worried about the things that you are experiencing because, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests along with thanksgiving be made known unto God. 
Prayer is the vehicle that you have been given. It's an anointed vehicle. Do not let anyone tell you that the vehicle of prayer is haphazard. It is not. It is very strategic. It is very um, essential to your successful spiritual life. And the Bible says clearly that when you make prayers, along with thanksgiving, which is you're thanking God for the correcting that he's doing. You're thanking God for the opportunity that he gives you every day to make things anew, that the old things of yesterday are passed away and everything is becoming new. That in those instances, at that moment, the blessings of the Lord, the Bible says, the peace of God that passes understanding, it, it shall keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Verse 7, that is uh, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 7. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, you will get a comprehension. You wouldn't even know how you got here, but you overcame. You wouldn't know what God was doing behind the scenes, but he did it anyway. And even though it looked like a slippery slope, it looked like something that you are losing and failing, it actually turned around for your victory. That is the grace that makes life meaningful and possible in the kingdom of God. So it says, um, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Shall we pray? This morning, I thank you, Heavenly Father, as we give thanks and make our requests known unto you through the avenue of prayer. I thank you, Lord, that as we pray today for the safety and the well-being of our family, our loved ones, maybe they're traveling, maybe they're engaged in activities that gives us concerns, maybe there is a mother or a father that is worried about the totality of their children's existence, if it is in college, if it is in high school, if it is in elementary school, maybe their child is vulnerable, they're being bullied and they have no solution for such an incident. Maybe they're going out for the first time experiencing life away from their home and they don't know whether they have been fully taught of everything that makes street sense unto them. Whatever the concerns are, somebody's job is being questioned. Somebody's individual assignments are being threatened. Maybe the economy at the workplace is shutting places down when they should be opening up the doors. Maybe people have bought properties and are wondering, can they sustain the expenses associated with life? Somebody has applied for something and wondering whether they will get a response. Others are having health issues that they cannot explain. In spite of the months and the series of treatments, it looks like things have plateaued. Whatever the concern is this morning, I pray today that the peace of God that passes understanding will keep and guard their hearts in Christ Jesus. I pray today with them that according to your word, where any two agree as touching anything that they shall ask the Father in your name, you said it shall be done that the Son may be glorified, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Today, I thank you, Father, that our lives are destined to bring glory unto you. Our activities on earth will glorify the Father by the result of what we experience experience, by what we know already, by what is being revealed unto us and through us by the Holy Spirit. I thank you this morning that my life brings glory unto you. My honor, O oh God, is from you. I thank you, Father, that I do not turn to Egypt for validation. I do not turn to the world system. But, Father, we renounce the hidden things of dishonesty according to your word. And we lend ourselves unto your counsel. We allow you to guide us in every step that we take. And for that, we are grateful that the peace of God that passes understanding, it keeps our heart and mind in you. Thank you this morning for this experience that we have. We call it an encounter of blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to take a break, but I thank you for joining us and see you on the other side in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. My name is Pastor Joshua and I'm so excited you're back here on our YouTube channel, New Life City Church DC and uh, our YouTube channel, NLCCDC. Uh, shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have found us pleasing in your sight and ready to bless us with every blessing contained in the heavens for your people. Thank you for the love you have for us this morning and what is contained in your word on our behalf. Thank you for this in Jesus' name and everybody said, Amen. Well, this morning I'm going to be teaching on a series called uh, it's, um, Mental Distractions is where I, I find them. Uh, but more importantly, I could also say it's part two to our series um, of, of No Shaking. It's a term that we use loosely. When we say don't shake, it means in our uh, local tongue, don't be too concerned about the things around you. Don't let it uh, grieve your heart. Don't let it uh, thrust you into the side road. Don't let you be perplexed. Um, I want us to look at Psalms 103 and verse 2. Psalms 103 verse 2. Because it says in verse 2 that we shall bless the Lord, O my soul, and not forget his benefits. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and not forget his benefits. When I read the word benefits, it comes back again to the book of Hebrews and chapter 3. Hebrews, um, sorry, and verse 11 and verse 3. Hebrews 11 and verse 6, actually. It says, Without faith it is impossible to please God or please him, for he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The excellent part, what makes life different from other religions that are out there when you know God is that the truth about God makes or reveals unto us that he is a God that engages with those that worship him. He engages in a sense that the evidence of your walk with God is seen by all, by the reward that he showers on you. God doesn't just want you to pray to him. He knows that when you do pray, expect an answer. Don't just expect an answer. Have the answer ready to the point and degree that I can measure your closeness with his God, with, with understanding his ways, by the amount of responses you get when you do pray. Very important. Our God is not a silent God. Our God is not a God that stands by. Almighty God is so anxious to or so excited uh, to make sure that he delivers you from every form of um, insufficiency that you encounter. This is why when we read that Psalms 103 and verse um, 2, it says, don't forget the benefit. And the number one benefit he lists in verse 4 is that he redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. He redeems your life from destruction. The redemptive power of God is to take you out of situations that can potentially cause you harm. This week, we saw destructions in Texas having the worst wildfire ever. We see the destructions in the West Coast where uh, 12 feet of snow is pummeling the regions of the Seneca Valleys and the mountains, uh, 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 whatever they're called in, in California. And, and it's just such a life-changing ordeal to many people that are trapped in snow. These are natural occurring events for whatever reasons. On the East Coast over here, we have flooding. We have uh, uh, rains that have come for days and days and is causing all kind of damage. Everywhere it seems that something is amiss. And it brings concern to individuals. And the Bible says, he redeems your life from destruction. Your life is redeemed from destruction. You know, yesterday I was watching the news and there was an incident in Idaho where a lady was driving a truck, a big semi-truck, and had a multi-car accident on a bridge. And her truck went over the edge of the bridge and she was dangling with the cab at the front. And she said all she did was pray. The firefighters that got there had to upsile down by road to lift her out of the cab before it fell, and or before it potentially fell, because it didn't fall in the end. But there was so much fear that if she wasn't strapped in her seat, she could have fallen through the windscreen and out into the uh, Ohio River. It would have just been such a devastating loss for, for this lady driver. And it reminds us 
how many times so many people are exposed to what was designed to destroy them, but by the mercies and the goodness of God, they are delivered. There are things that happen around us ahead of time, God warns us, and it will do us well to be sensitive to hear with our spirit what God is saying, to avoid those instances, to escape these occurrences, and the Bible calls them the benefits. Verse 5, as we said last week, is he satisfies our mouth with good things so that the youth is renewed like the eagles. The youth is renewed like the eagles. And that's just so exciting because uh, eagles as birds uh, have unique capabilities. I don't know how their own young are thriving, but the Bible says clearly that he satisfies your mouth with good things. He brings good things to your attention that you can speak about them. We are living in times right now that is causing concern for many, so many individuals. I had a dear uh, a family member uh, engage in a um, stroke this past uh, couple of days. And uh, while we were on the break, he had called to say, am I coming over for him to be prayed for? And I said, you know what? Um, in his case, the stroke happened while he was driving. That's one of the worst times for it to happen. But fortunately, uh, he didn't hit anything but the guardrail and was immediately helivacked to the right authorities. And within the 24-hour window of healing, was able to get top uh, health care being ministered to him. Those are the things that you realize that what the devil meant for evil, God turned around for good. He found a way to, to help an individual in such crisis. That could have happened while sleeping. Today is the, the 4th of, um, or the 3rd of March, the third day in the third month of the year 2024. And already we are seeing that there is an increase in activities in the realm of the spirit. More than ever, I encourage us to spend time to pray, knowing that there are counterattacks. As you grow in knowledge, realize that the land has been given unto you. Like God said to the Israelites, I am leading you into the promised land. But there are giants in this land. There are challenges in this land. There are difficulties in this land. But in each and every one of you, you will overcome them. You will overcome them because the Lord is a God of war. He's a man of war and Jehovah is his name. He fights battles on our behalf. He says, before you go into the battle, give me a dance and a shout and a praise. Praise me for the victory that I've already given you and you will be surprised at the outcome. Don't be anxious about how many thousands are against you and how many millions are struggling like you are. Don't be tied in into thinking you're just one of the numbers. God says you are an unique individual. You're the apple of my eye. I know the amount of hair on your head. I know the details concerning you. I was there from the beginning. I am your alpha and the omega. I am the beginning and the end of your journey. I started you before you were born in your mother's womb. I knew you. And I know the thoughts I have to give you an expected end. When you were chosen to be born, when you overcame every setback to be born, be in mindful of the fact that you were created for victory. You are not a believer today by accident. God has shaped your journey. He came in, swooped in, took you out, translated you into the kingdom of, your life, of, of, of his dear son. And now that you are here, he is trying to shine the victory light on you. This is why Isaiah says, arise and shine for your light has come. I want everybody on this call to acknowledge today, your light has come and you will surely shine and nothing will diminish the brightness of your rising. According to Isaiah, you will arise and continue to arise until the high places. What God has in stock and plan for you will not be disrupted by the plans of the enemy. Listen, do not be discouraged this morning. I don't know who this word is for, but I just want you to know that the biggest fight starts in the mind. This is why he says in the book of Corinthians, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove that which is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. As a matter of fact, let's look at that in our Bibles. In Romans, uh, uh, is it Romans 12? In the book of Romans, um, chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, or verse 1, by the mercies of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, 
holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world. The conforming in effect is why we're experiencing this mental anguish, this uh, um, what I call the uh, mental distractions, where suddenly you feel that everything is coming against you. It's playing with your mind. It makes you feel as if everywhere you turn, people are giving you dumb answers. They're giving you dumb suggestions. They're, they're saying things that is just irritating you because you know this cannot be the will of God for you. This cannot be the, the purpose of your journey. You've come too far to experience such inadequacies. And the enemy is doing all he can. He's grasping for the straws to make sure that he can bring those things to the forefront of your life. And they are distractions because... They do not represent what God is really doing behind the scenes. They do not represent what is really going on in your life. And they do not account for anything because you are a child of God that is in light. And that light is bound to shine if you let it and if you allow it. In those moments where you are so depressed or you are so worried or you are so confused or you are so distracted, Know that those are not physical distractions. They are mostly in the mind. And so it says, do not be conformed, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. So, and I say through the grace of God given unto me, verse 3, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself higher than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. There is only so much that you can handle at the stage where you are now. Don't overwork it. Don't overstress it. There's only so much you can take. God says, I know what you can take. I know the pressures that you can go through. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 10. Let's turn there real quick. It says in uh, 1 Corinthians, and I think it's the 10th chapter, and down... Verse 13, sorry. It says, There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. One of the things we keep reminding ourselves is the faithfulness of God. The Bible says his faithfulness is renewed every morning. And what it says here, he will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able God will not allow you to go through more than you are physically and mentally possible to handle. So if it's coming against you, the first thing you remind yourself is that, wait a minute, if this is coming right now, then God is confident that I can handle it. And now with that confidence comes some responsibility. For example, it says here, is able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. With the temptation comes that ability to escape the pressure associated with the challenges that you're facing. And that's the key, that when I go through difficulties I think I'm overwhelmed by, I will turn to my quiet space. I will take and excuse myself, find my place. Maybe it's a drive, maybe it's a walk, maybe it's a, it's a room, maybe it's a moment, but you have to come back to center. You have to get back to yourself and say, no, Lord, I am here available. I'm still your boy. I'm available. Um, what steps should I take? I am not accepting what is going on around me. I am humbling myself to manage these situations according to the grace and the favor that you've given me. Show me how to escape this pressure by your strength. And the Bible says quickly, he answers that prayer. Quickly, he acknowledges that this is not for you to handle by yourself. Many a times, especially if you're an alpha personality, I'm an alpha personality. I lead everywhere I go. It's just natural to me. But there are chances when I'm leading and I'm thinking people are asking for direction and they want me to lead. And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I have to just pretend. There is no pretensing in the things of God. You can turn to God and say, excuse me, everyone, give me a moment. I'll sort this out. Step aside and ask for the wisdom of God, the counsel of God, the grace of God. God, what am I supposed to do in this situation? You have placed me here as a leader. Everyone is looking unto me to lead, but you have not given direction. Lord, I turn to you. I humble myself in your presence to get understanding and to get wisdom. I know there is a way of escape because you've said it in the book of Corinthians. You have declared it. You have made known unto me that every pressure you will not suffer 
suffer me to be tempted beyond what I can handle. I can handle this pressure. I can handle this, this situation. It is not overwhelming me. It will not destroy me. It will not sacrifice me. It will not do whatever because I walk together with you. That's the key here, that you walk together with the knowledge and the wisdom of God, that you learn to pivot in your life. Sometimes, multiple times in the day, I have to turn back and say, God, what is the next step? You know, that used to be the pattern in the Old Testament. That used to be how the believers, that are our forefathers, used to guide us through the system of life. They used to come to us and say, hey, God, I have run this far. Should I continue to pursue? I have run this far. Should I continue to make ways in this situation? And in, in, in any way that we see ourselves going, that is where we begin to recognize that this is what God is asking us to do in our lives. I'm just trying to get off the, uh, um, the channel here because it looks like it's a distraction to us. Anyway, it is one of those things where we, we have to allow God to work with us in the things that we are doing. Recognize that you are not alone. Don't be prideful to think that if it, you don't do it, nobody else can get it done. That's one of the deceptions. The enemy says, well, if you don't make a decision, make a decision, make a decision, and add the pressure to us. That is not how we walk in the things of God. This is why this scripture that we just read to he redeems a life from destruction goes very close with what we read in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 that it says be careful for nothing but in all things by prayer. So we see in the mouth of two witnesses something is confirmed. Prayer always seems to precede the solutions that God brings to the individual. I repeat that. Prayer seems to precede the solutions that God brings to any individual that cries upon his name, that turns to God and says, I need an answer. If you pray, answers will come. How long then do you pray? How would you pray? Well, in this instance, it tells you that you pray as the Spirit leads you till there is a peace in your heart. It can come in five minutes. It might come after several hours. It might even take some days. It doesn't matter. The good news is that God is in the business of answering prayer of the believer. Let's look at Jeremiah 33 in verse 3. Jeremiah in the Old Testament, uh, chapter 33 and verse 3. Very useful scripture that would help you. It's one of the prophets, and I love this, uh, Jeremiah 33. And we are looking at verse 3. It says this, and you probably heard me say it time and time again. Call unto me and I will. Call unto me and I will answer. It's not suggesting that he might answer. He says, if you call on him, he's surely going to answer. I remember as a young Christian, I was told that this is God's phone number, Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me and I will answer. But he's not just going to answer and says, hello, hi, he's answered. No, he's calling unto him and says, I will now then show you the great and mighty things which you did not know. In other words, every time we call on God by prayer, when we finish praying, we should be so much smarter, so much more knowledgeable about things we're dealing with than we did before we engaged in prayer in the first place. That's a surprise because many people don't expect that. What they're saying is that, well, I pray to God and then there is silence and then there is nothing. And then there is more anguish because I feel, did he hear me? Did he not hear me? Is something going on? Is nothing going on? All of this contradicts the expectation God has. His statement is this, when you call upon me, not only will I answer, but I will then show you great and mighty things which you did not know. So how is he going to show them to you? Does it come in a vision? Does it come in a dream? Does it come in a direction, a prophetic word? Is something you read. It comes in everything. It comes in every format possible. This is why at every time when I finish praying, my heart has an expectation of receptiveness. I'm looking for things and saying that in this lesson, in this observation, in this thought, there must be something that is going to guide me. I look around me with expectation. Immediately, who's going to meet me? Who's going to call me? Who's going to say something to me? Immediately after I pray, when I come out of the presence of God, my my heart is like a, a, a plain sponge that has been squeezed and is now being released, ready to absorb all kinds of information across every platform. Maybe it's in my ears. Maybe I'll see something and hear something and suddenly 
it makes sense to me. That's the beauty about communicating with God. He is trans platform. He is trans media. He goes through so many things. There's things that could be just dropped in your spirit and you just know it. And you're like, wow, I didn't even know it. And then after it has been dropped, I now look for the backup of that. I love my phone because it has Google on there. And now that I'm, I'm uh, uh, getting older in my, in my memory, some of the things I, I don't quite remember any longer as I should, I can just Google parts of the phrase and, and it brings the Bible up in a manner that I can see, oh yeah, that's the scripture I'm looking for. And that's the exciting thing that we have these tools available and it is God speaking to us through his word. He reminds us because his word is a constant. It doesn't change. It's a standard I can adhere to. It helps me to comprehend. It helps me evaluate and it helps me judge my environment for clarity. I don't trust everything I hear any longer. And so I have to confirm with the word of God, is this really so? Is this really true? Like the Bereans, we don't just take it because, oh, pastor said it, the apostle said it, the prophet said it. No, I need to vet it and see, is there merit to what I'm hearing? If there is not, I throw it out. I don't even bother about it. But if there is, it will make you want to search further and say, what else do I know that I have missed? What else am I missing? Mind you, the times that we're in this month of March, I expect a great cloud of darkness to shake the surface of the earth. And I'm saying that I'm getting this by revelation. I'm getting this by prophetic understanding. This season that we've entered right now is among the last parts of, of just a turmoil. God wants to push out this blessing where he says that the, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. And for that to happen, he needs people in place that are embracing his knowledge, his truth, his power that are passionate about serving him in every capacity necessary. And he is going to now end elevate us as he's educating us, as he's showing us our potential, as revealing to us the, the opportunities. There are people that are praying today in methods and means you have no idea. And the beautiful thing is God is answering. Things are in place. Yesterday, I took a drive through Southeast DC in the evening and began to show them how the city is transforming even before our very eyes. If you have never been, you might think, well, nothing is going on. But the truth of the matter is, is so much is going on that we are just unaware of. God is coming on multiple fronts in multiple areas multiple businesses are getting opportunities. The wave of revival is coming. More people are coming into the body of Christ that need teachers, that need leaders, student individuals that will show them how to live a godly and an acceptable life. The glorious days ahead are filled with so much excitement. I'm not even worried about the challenges I have faced in the past. It says, Jesus, for the price that was set before him, he endured the cross. He went through the pain because he could see the future bright. He could see where he was going. He saw the end story. He saw the light at the end of the tunnel. Maybe because you think nothing is happening, you get frustrated with how much longer am I going to be in this situation? Well, it is time for you to get out of that mold, out of that rot, and begin to look up onto the heavens. Look up unto God. Get up in the morning excited and says, This is the day the Lord has made, and therefore I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will be glad today. I'm not moved by things. I will be glad today. Every one of these are specific statements I am making that I know are not only anointed, they are God-inspired. They are blessings that are coming my way because that is how God moves. And so it's exciting to be here today, and I'm so glad to be part of this move, teaching you uh, uh, the Word of God as we do every Sunday. I want you to encourage somebody to share this platform, share it with friends, with your contacts. Let them know that on this time, between 11 and 12.15, we do teach the word. We do encourage people by the teaching that comes and the understanding I have gleaned to share with you how easy it is and how glorious it is to become a believer in the 21st century. It's been a pleasure ministering to you. God bless you. In the screen coming up next, we have...